Greetings, Pastor Eric Burtness from Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Redmond. Good to be with you today on day 13. We're on the next Do Not Fear in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 32 to 34, where Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock. Do not fear, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Great verses there. Um, Jesus says, do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Focus on those words for a minute because as a result of that, of God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, um, Jesus says there comes with that gift of the kingdom, kingdom responsibility, where we should live our lives in gratitude by being responsible disciples. It's as if Jesus is saying here, read those verses a couple times. It's as if Jesus is saying there, with that gift, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom with that gift comes a certain level of responsibility. Now, think when you get a gift, you usually say something like, thank you, that's oftentimes a sufficient response for a gift. Thank you for your prayer, for your concern. Bless you, thank you. We say some things like that. We write a thank you note. But sometimes a gift brings a whole lot more responsibility. A commentator wrote, this about this verse. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Commentator wrote, the moment of the birth of a child is one of unspeakable joy. Yet, if the parents stop to count the cost of taking that child home, which unfortunately they never, they, unfortunately they never do count the cost before they bring that baby home from the hospital, they might be tempted to turn the gift down. Now that was said tongue in cheek, but think of the cost of having a baby. Baby food, diapers, sleepless nights, worrisome days, braces for the teeth, clothes and school supply, prom dresses or tuxedos, college tuition, repairs to the family car, Fenders, heartaches and disappointments, weddings, I mean, all kinds of things. It might, if the parent counted the cost of bringing the child home from the hospital, they might say, uh, you know, maybe I'll pass on all the responsibility that comes with this child. Clearly, the gift of a child brings great responsibility but it also brings tremendous joy that is worth any cost that you incur with having children. If you have children, you know that. In a sense, the same kind of responsibility comes with God's gift of the kingdom. It is your father's good pleasure. Do not fear, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Those are not significant, insignificant responsibilities that Jesus says here. We're to give up our materialistic view of the world. We're to share our wealth with those in need. We're to work expanding God's kingdom to those we meet. We're called to love our neighbors. We're called to be witnesses to others about the redeeming love of God. We're called to be aware of so many isms, racism, sexism, classism, so many other isms that try to put us above other people because in God's economy of justice, we're all children of God. No matter our color, our economic status, what country we're from, unless you're from Norway, but you know, there's only a few of us that are, anyway, no, no matter what country we're from, we're all children of God who deserve the same kind of love and support and opportunities. That is a gift from God that if you stop for a moment to calculate the responsibility of it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, if you stopped and thought about all the responsibility that that comes with that, it might terrify the recipient. But 
along with those responsibilities, the gift of God's kingdom that God wishes to give us also brings us the joy of knowing God's redeeming love, which means not having to carry around the burden of our sins and failure like a, like a, like a ball and chain around our anchor, ankles. Most importantly, the gift of God's kingdom that God wants to give us offers us new life and we realize that we're a part of God's extended family. All that is at the core of Jesus' message when he says, have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, little flock, right? For it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. As a member of God's family, plural, as Jesus' flock, plural, we're not individuals saddled with the entire burden of responsibility of the gift of God's kingdom. We're a part of a flock, a church, a community, a family. And as children of God in God's family, we're individual members of a large flock of faithful disciples who seek to live as citizens on earth, citizens though of the kingdom of heaven. As faithful disciples, we seek to do God's will, which is not just ours alone to accomplish, but ours to work with others in God's flock, in God's community, in God's church. That's why a part of being a uh, a member of God's flock at full God's congregation, that means that that's such a blessing. We don't have to face whatever we're doing, whatever we're sharing alone. You know, we can't do everything. None of us can do everything. And in, in a very real way, there's a sense of liberation knowing that we, I, I can't do everything. But that enables me and you to do something and to do it well. Likely, it'll be incomplete. Likely, it's just a beginning. It's a step along the way. And it's an opportunity for God's grace to enter into your life. Don't fear, for it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So we are ones who work for the kingdom of God while we live on this earth. And in whatever we do, we look for opportunities for God's grace to enter our lives and for God's grace to do the rest. You know, many times we're never going to be able to see the end result of what we do. But that's the difference between being the master builder and a worker. We're workers. God is a master builder. We are ministers. We're not the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus brings us into his flock. So, by doing all of the little things we do as individuals within the flock, the community, the church, all of those cumulative things that we do individually, none of them enough in themselves, none of them complete in themselves, yet as a part of the flock of Jesus, as a member of God's kingdom family here on earth, we do finally realize that God's loving presence does come into our midst, calms our fear. Don't fear, little flock. It's God's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do not fear. God will give us that while we live on earth, working to that fulfillment of God's kingdom, which will one day come. Not now, but in the meantime, we work toward the fulfillment of God's kingdom. Do not fear, little flock. For it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's pray. Lord, you give your people a kingdom. You give us a peace that we can shine brightly in our dark world. Give us the gift of your kingdom and help us lean into the responsibility that comes with that. Grant us courage to live faithfully even in hard times. Let your love be at the beginning of our wisdom rather than allowing fear in this world to drive our actions. Show us your mercy. Help us to work toward healing those who are suffering in the midst of the uncertainty of our lives with the violence of the many different kind of viruses infecting your good creation. Most of all, Lord Jesus, come. Restore the world you have made and make all things new. We pray that your will 
would be done in us, through us, and among us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a good day or evening. Bye-bye.